For almost two years, COVID-19 has been a hot topic, dominating all news outlets and changing our lives. The COVID-19. The wave of COVID. COVID-19. The coronavirus. COVID-19. is coronavirus. As the pandemic continues to progress, we continue to be bombarded with a vast amount of scientific information that continues to change and may be faulty or misleading. Among these is the big question as to whether pregnant people should get the COVID-19 vaccine. In this video, we will present the facts on the topic. First, let's discuss COVID-19. It is caused by the specific coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, which results in a highly contagious respiratory infection characterized by a cough, difficulty breathing, fever, fatigue, loss of taste or smell, and more. At this time, COVID-19 preventative strategies include physical distancing, utilization of masks, proper hygiene, isolation of those who are infected, and most importantly, vaccines. Before we discuss COVID-19 vaccines and pregnancy, if you are looking for more information on the COVID-19 vaccines in general, please check out the other videos on the Demystifying Medicine channel or visit the additional resources in the description. Vaccines are currently recommended for a large proportion of the population, including pregnant individuals. However, through an abundance of ever-changing scientific information, combined with myths being propagated through social media, many pregnant women have been left confused about if they should get the vaccine. For many people, pregnant individuals included, the decision to get vaccinated was not necessarily an easy one. In tackling the information on the topic, it is important to consider the concerns pregnant people have when it comes to vaccination and the varying perspectives that exist on the issue. Some people will describe the decision to get vaccinated as a familial decision. One news article recently highlighted the experiences of two people who approached the question of being vaccinated as a familial decision, but had two different outcomes. Others who chose against vaccination may cite reasons such as lack of studies pertaining to the long-term effects on the health of the baby. This may stem from past examples on how medications being recommended to pregnant individuals inadvertently caused side effects for the baby. One such example includes thalidomide, which was intended to alleviate morning sickness during pregnancy, but ended up having serious consequences for the child. There are also those who have chosen not to get vaccinated and rely on the experiences of others. They listen to stories in the me media of pregnant individuals who contract COVID-19, but recount an easy recovery. Others may have based their decision on information presented in the media. But the fact is that just because something is published in a news article or spread through social media does not mean it is true. In fact, a lot of the most popular information regarding pregnant individuals and COVID-19 is based on misinformation or exaggerated statements. We will discuss two of the most common myths that were propagated in the media, as well as the true scientific standpoint behind such statements. One myth concerning the COVID-19 vaccine for pregnant women was that it will make them infertile. In December 2020, a blog post titled, Head of Pfizer Research, COVID Vaccine is Sterilization, references a petition made by Dr. Wadarg and Dr. Yeadon to Europe's medicines agency. Within this post, it was said that the vaccine contains a spike protein called syncytin-1, vital for the formation of the human placenta. If the vaccine works so that we form an immune response against this spike protein, we are also training the female body to attack syncytin-1 in the placenta, which could lead to infertility in women. Saying that the COVID vaccine will cause infertility is a bold statement, and one made without any supporting evidence. After this blog post, thousands went to social media, spreading this misinformation, leading many people who want children in the future, as well as pregnant individuals and their families, to become hesitant of the vaccine. Though tempting to believe, the fact that the female body will attack the placenta and therefore lead to infertility is in fact false. Research conducted by immunologists 
prove that there is actually no significant similarity between the amino acids of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein and syncytin-1. The syncytin-1 protein is made up of 538 amino acids. However, a Pfizer spokesperson confirmed that the protein targeted by their vaccine only shares a sequence of four amino acids with syncytin-1, which is too short to cause autoimmunity problems. Given this information, women can have confidence that the vaccine won't cause their antibodies to attack their own placenta. Another myth that has been circulating around social media is that the COVID-19 vaccine leads to miscarriages. This myth originated from a preliminary study done in the New England Medical Journal, but went viral when their findings were misinterpreted by the public. Various tweets and news articles spun the information, which led to the popular statement that pregnant women who received the COVID-19 vaccine have a miscarriage rate of 82%. That being said, people forgot to highlight the fact that these numbers and data came from a preliminary study with a small group of participants. This means that the data from the study are not an accurate representation of what would happen to every pregnant woman who got the vaccine. In other words, the results were skewed by the small sample size. In the review titled, Are COVID-19 Vaccines Safe in Pregnancy? by Victoria Mail, the researchers studied the clinical trial data from Pfizer Biotech, Moderna, and AstraZeneca, and reported that women who got pregnant during the clinical trials of the vaccine had similar rates of miscarriages compared to the women who weren't administered the vaccine. This indicates that the event of a miscarriage is not correlated with getting vaccinated for COVID-19. These findings are also supported by a systematic review written by Falsa Perla and his colleagues. If you are worried about experiencing adverse effects that may negatively affect your baby, studies in animals receiving a Moderna, Pfizer, or Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine before or during pregnancy found no safety concerns in pregnant animals or their babies. In comparing pregnant people who received a COVID-19 vaccine with those who did not, scientists found that vaccination actually lowered the risk of infection. And should pregnant women contract COVID-19, those who are vaccinated are less likely to become severely ill. This is why getting vaccinated does not just protect you, but your baby as well. For anyone who receives a COVID-19 vaccine, their bodies will build antibodies against coronavirus. This is the same whether you are pregnant or not. In a study published in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, it was discovered that for mothers who had been vaccinated, coronavirus antibodies were found in their infant's umbilical cord blood, indicating that the antibodies in the mother can transfer to the baby's blood. This means COVID-19 vaccination during pregnancy can help protect babies against COVID-19. When infants are born, they are exposed to a variety of viruses, bacteria, and infections. They are born with an immature immune system and rely on their mothers to transfer immunity, either through the placenta or breast milk. The antibodies transferred through the placenta only last for one year but the antibodies transferred through the breast milk plays a crucial role in developing the baby's innate immunity, which is their first line of defense against germs and bacteria. Breastfeeding is related to various positive outcomes in babies. For example, there is decreased respiratory infection, less burden of diarrheal disease, and decreased long-term risk of developing asthma, diabetes, and inflammatory bowel disease. A study was carried out to test whether the coronavirus antibodies are transferred from mother to baby through breast milk. The breast milk was collected before administering the COVID-19 vaccines and once a week for six weeks starting at two weeks after the first vaccination dose. The results showed that the level of antibodies in the breast milk were significantly high two weeks after the first dose. Though promising, further studies must be conducted in order to test how effectively the antibodies are transferred from the breast milk to the infant's blood. We understand that this was a lot of information to digest. If you are pregnant, we encourage you to talk to your OBGYN to make the best decision for you. We had the opportunity to interview the chair of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at McMaster University, Dr. John Barrett. 
He is also the co-chair of the Ontario Task Force on Managing COVID-19 in Pregnancy and Newborns. Here's what he had to say. From your perspective, what are some of the reasons pregnant people are hesitant to get the COVID-19 vaccination? Well, that's a good question. Um, don't, for all, don't forget, we're dealing with an issue of vaccine hesitancy generally in the population. Um, it varies in different populations, different uh, social demographic groups, and I don't think we understand what makes up the vaccine hes hesitancy overall. I think it's probably different in every population and every group. When you add pregnancy to that mix, I think there's some generalizabilities. I think most pregnant people are inherently anxious about taking stuff uh, into their bodies, and that could be foodstuffs. It certainly exists to medications, medications, um, and no doubt, therefore, it will extend to this vaccine of which there is so much, you know, so much fear going about as it is. So it, it makes a lot of sense to me that of all the reasons for vaccine hesitancy, whatever they are in whichever populations, that when you throw pregnancy into the mix, there will be an, an exaggeration of that effect, simply because of, you know, pregnant people are naturally concerned about what they're putting into their bodies. What are the benefits for a pregnant individual if they become vaccinated? Okay, so, I mean, for the premise, we have to understand that the COVID vaccine benefits you whether you're not pregnant. The, the, the rate of getting the, uh, ill from the disease and probably even contracting the disease is far, far less if you're vaccinated. So we know that. Now, pregnant people, if you get COVID, are at a significantly higher risk than non-pregnant for ending up in ICU and even worse. So, um, so therefore, any effect the vaccine has is magnified in pregnancy because pregnant people are at increased risk from COVID. And there's no doubt about it, the data is clear now, that it is. So, not, so, so pregnant people are at increased risk for severe disease and therefore obviously uh, will benefit from the vaccine, which prevents severe disease. What are the benefits for the fetus if their mother gets vaccinated while pregnant? Now you ask about the baby. So um, whenever you have a sick mom, you have a sick baby. So it goes it goes to, it's logical that if, it, if it's gonna benefit the mom, it's gonna affect the baby as well. But there are some perhaps specific benefits as well um, that there have been studies to, to show that the antibodies that a, that a mom produces can cross to the baby and therefore the vaccine might protect the baby as well. What types of conversations should pregnant people and their families have with their doctors regarding vaccination? I think frank conversations as to what are the reasons I should get the vaccine, what are the risks, what are the potential risks, why are people, um, why is this hesitancy there? Frank conversations, because these these questions usually have a, a kernel of truth somewhere, and some of them don't, but some of them do have some kernel of truth somewhere, some reason to be feared, and most doctors who are informed uh, will be able to, to answer those risks. If not, there's actually a, a COVID sort of hotline that that I'm, I'm part of a COVID group for physicians that you can that that physicians can phone and get an online consult within I think it's three four days from an expert who can help them so so even if the, the caregiver doesn't know themselves there is an ability to to get expert help um, uh, the and there are many organizations now the SOGC Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada the, um, the Society for the Midwife, uh, Midwives uh, College, College of Midwives, uh, the Provincial Council for Maternal and Child Health. There are many, many reliable sources now that, you know, if, if, a, if a caregiver is faced with a patient who's asking questions they don't know, they can get reliable information. So like most things, like most issues in pregnancy, um, the pregnant person trusts their caregiver and so they should engage that and say, well, why should I take it? And, and, and most caregivers will be, will be able to provide these answers. If not, those answers are readily available. Do you have a message to any pregnant people who are hesitant about getting vaccinated? Yeah, I mean, the message is I, I understand why you're hesitant. I've been caring for pregnant people for 30 years and, and I know how precious your baby is and I know how careful you want to be. But it's precisely because of that that you should go and get the vaccine because by not taking the vaccine you are significantly increasing your risk for health and you're significantly increasing your risk your baby's risk for ill health by being pre -term, by being born preterm or early the studies are now wide and complete there is there is no risk identified 
And you might be saying, well, it hasn't been around for long enough. That's true for this vaccine, but we understand really well the mechanism of production of this vaccine. It's not a live vaccine, can't affect you. Um, and therefore I, I can't uh, recommend strongly enough that, that, that you go and get the vaccine. Um, it, it could save your life. And in fact, I, I have seen the opposite, unfortunately. Um, which is very unusual for us to see that in modern day obstetrics, really sick woman in ICU. And we've seen so much and it's almost all, all in fact, it is all that I've seen is in the unvaccinated mom. So as a personal plea, go and get yourself vaccinated. It's the best thing you can do for your health and the baby's health.